Hi guys! Hello mga kabeshi, mga kapanga! Kamusta po kayong lahat dyan? I really hope that you're all doing well and welcome back to my YouTube channel! Unang-una sa lahat, I would like to greet you all a happy Valentine's Day! May love life ka man o wala! Always remember na ang pamilya mo ay constant na nagpaparamdam ng pagmamahal sa iyo. Shoutout po pala dun sa mami ko at sa kapatid ko na si Matthew. Sobrang miss na miss na miss na miss ko na kayo. I know hindi enough yung pera, yung flowers, Aww. yung laman ng balikbayan box na ipinapadala ko. But always remember na mahal na mahal ko na kayo. Excited na ako. Sana makauwi ako this year. Pangalawa, guys, gusto ko lang pong magsabi talaga ng maraming 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 Salamat because finally my YouTube channel has surpassed 1,000 subscribers and guys I know sa iba sa inyo sobrang maliit lang na bagay but for me it's really a big thing Aww. talagang hindi ko po yung inaasahan from starting to zero and now we have more than 1,000 subscribers Sobrang na-appreciate ko po lahat ng mga nagme-message sa akin everyday na talaga naman nag-share ng vlogs ko even sa iba't ibang parte ng mundo, from Saudi Arabia, to Dubai, to US, to Guam, to Malaysia, to India. Sobrang, wow, na-appreciate ko po yan, guys. And continue to share my vlog para mas matulungan pa natin yung ibang nurses. Okay? Without further ado, we will be talking about how to pass your adaptation with just a minimum of six weeks of training period, including the similarities with the medical terminologies or abbreviation, and most importantly, the differences with our business here in Ireland. Are you excited? Let's do this! Let's begin with the orientation. There are two kinds of shifts applicable to adaptation nurses. First is short day, and second is long day. Let's talk about the short days. Short days are required during your first week of training period, and it usually comes with three days of duty and weekdays only because you are not yet allowed to have weekends, night shift, and work even on holidays. Second is the long day. You are required to have three long days during the weekdays from your second week up to the six weeks. Guys, hindi na rin masama because at this time, this is the best opportunity for you to be flexible to familiarize yourself with the nursing routine here in Ireland. Next would be our nursing routine. So dito sa Ireland, we will usually start our handover. Handover is also in line with the endorsement in the Philippines. And we will start from half 7 up until 8 o'clock in the morning. Half 7 means 7.30. We usually say the times here differently like kapag 7.45, quarter to 8, or kapag 8.10, 10 past 8, and wala namang masama doon. If hindi nyo naintindihan, lalong-lalo na kapag adaptation nurse kayo, be careful when it comes to time of giving medications. And kapag yung colleague nyo, hindi nyo naintindihan, lagi nyo sasabihin, Excuse me, what is that again? Or, pardon? I would like just to give a small background in the area where I am working. So here in Ireland, we are so blessed because we are practicing most of the time team nursing, which is very different from the primary nursing that we used to do in the Philippines. So in team nursing, in our section, usually in the morning, we have two staff nurses and one healthcare assistant, or usually in the Philippines, healthcare assistant means nursing assistant or healthcare worker or parang ganun, similar na rin. So in the morning, 8 o'clock onwards, the three of us will usually assist the patient sitting up in their bed. May it be independent or assistance of 1 to 2. We will be arranging the food on their table and then we will check if who needs a priority when it comes to feeding or needs an assistance as well. 
At dyan papasok ang tip number one. Adaptation nurses can help assist with the breakfast of the patients. And guys, this is the best opportunity to show that you know how to initiate and be vocal about everything that you will do. Guys, say everything to your preceptor so that they can also allot their time to other activities. Indeed, not only this will enhance your communication to the patients, but also your preceptor will see that you are approachable and a great team player. Bongo! Come 8.15 onwards, one nurse will be doing the medication administration and the other will be doing the errands. So as an adaptation nurse, you can certainly help with doing the errands. And following that, there are two main tasks that needs to be accomplished by the errands nurse. First, prepare the patients for theater or in the Philippines, it is called operating room. Guys, there are no specific schedule for what time or what date will be the surgery of the patient. Minsan, na-prepare mo na yung patient pero canceled pala. <laughs> Charot! Minsan talaga guys, biglaan na lang na tinatawag ng porter. So dapat, kailangan mo na ma-prepare agad yung pre-operative checklist. And it simply includes the name, the date of birth of the patient, the age, any presence of allergies, any ECG available, especially for those patients above 50 years old, any blood thinners or anticoagulants given, any pre-medication that needs to be given, any anesthetist review that were done yesterday, and even like presence of IV cannula, um, pacemaker, heparin drip, PCA, backslab in situ, Kahit ano pang contraption yan guys, kailangan ilista na talaga. And most importantly, yung COVID-19 questionnaire, if the swab like is inconclusive or negative, kailangan pa rin tanungin kung may contact ba siya sa patient na may COVID, yung mga ganong things. And for the second task, if there are no scheduled surgeries for that day, dyan papasok ang ating tip number three. Adaptation nurses can certainly help with giving wash to the patients. Or in Philippines, bed bath ang tawag dyan. Apo, syempre tayo mga pinag alam na alam natin yan. Ilagi tayo naliligo eh, di ba? <laughs> and following that point, this is a great opportunity for you to practice your time management and show how you deal with your patients. In reality, if you will be handling 12 patients and all of them requires an assistance of two, you need to have a strategy. In my opinion, quick wash means quick is being less than 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And even if it's just 15 minutes, you can still maximize your time. Remember, this is the best chance that you've got to not just be technical about it, but also Talk to your patient about their culture or even understand their accent. Especially guys, if you think that your manager or your preceptor is actually like watching you all the time. Show them that you are enthusiastic even if you're doing this for repetitive times. And guys, don't be lazy even if we're not used to doing this in the Philippines, diba? Sabi nga nila, kapag may nilaga... May nilalagang euros ka na. Bonga! Next, from 9.45 to 10 o'clock a.m., the clinical nurse manager or equivalent to being a charge nurse in the Philippines, they will usually give a quick handover to us bedside nurses about the patients, about any updates regarding the discharge because in the morning, the clinical nurse managers usually are with the doctors doing their rounds. After that, starting 10 a.m., dun na magsisimula yung first break. So, isang staff nurse will be on the first break from 10 a.m. to 10.30. And the other nurse will be starting her break from 10.30 to 11. O, oh, ba? Hinding-hindi ka talaga mo gutom dito sa Ireland. I highly commend, guys, talaga yung 
nursing routine dito kahit papaano kasi after you are exhausted in the wash tapos after mo pa mag maging busy sa mga procedures talaga namang may oras pa para kumain ka, have your breakfast unlike sa Philippines sa talaga namang parang wala ng break at all at talaga namang yung una at huli mong inom ng tubig eh umaga pa, ba diba? So guys okay na rin dito sa Ireland at dyan naman papasok ang ating tip number 4. So while your preceptor or the other nurse is currently on her first break, this is the best opportunity for you to initiate and start getting the OBS. OBS is a short term for observations or in Philippines it's called vital signs. Guys, this is your moment to shine. It's very important for you to be more sensitive, responsible, and definitely help your colleagues. But it's essential as well that do not say you can do it if you will not really do it. Guys, tamang saktong bibula. Starting from 11 to 12 p.m., this is the specific time for your patients to be discharged. 12 p.m. means in Ireland is dinner time, which is in the Philippines, it's called lunch time. Well, ideally, the patient should go home before 11 a.m., but due to the delays of the prescription and the letters, and guys, the one who's responsible for doing those prescription and letters are the doctors or the interns of the consultant. So guys, tayong nurses, haya hay lang. <laughs> Bongga! Naalala ko noon nung staff nurse ako sa Pilipinas, parang grabe yung patient nga eh, relax lang. Tapos yung sobrang stress sa pagdi-discharge is yung relative kasi ayaw na nila mag-extend ng isa pang half day. Tapos parang hindi pa nila nababayaran on time yung bill. Pero ang hirap din naman kasi sa Pilipinas, di ba? Kasi nga may mga magko-comment pa na, Oh, bakit kasi hindi pa nagawa yung discharge prescription yesterday? Alam niyo naman na uuwi kami ngayon. Eddie, wow. Wow. <laughs> Charot. <laughs> Tip number five. As an adaptation nurse, it's very essential for you to at least follow up or contact the interns regarding the due letters. And most importantly, verbalize everything that you will do to the patient with your preceptor. Guys, gustong gusto nila yan. Bet na bet ka na nila after niyan. And kung wala naman ding discharge for that day, dyan natin ipasok ang tip number 6. Start to write your nursing notes while you still have a free time to do so. Tip number 7. So if you're already done writing your nurse's notes and wala pa namang 12 p.m., this is also the best time to initiate and check the blood sugar. But guys, always remember to always say it to your preceptor. Be proactive and be vocal about everything that you will do. Importante talaga guys yung communication kasi nga team nursing kami dito. So, sa pag-check ng blood sugar, usually yung mga patients na meron type 2 diabetes na history, we usually just check their blood sugar once a day. And this is the best time for you to remember that once a day or blood sugar should be checked at lunch time. Sa Pilipinas, yung usually na pag-check natin ng blood sugar, they come with milligrams per deciliter. But here in Ireland, we are using millimoles per liter. So, sa Pilipinas, di ba, usually yung normal na value is from 80 to 120. Okay na sa atin yun. But here in Ireland, it usually from 4 to 6 millimoles per liter. Importante guys, na once you check the blood sugar, also check kapag meron silang automatic pre-meals insulin that needs to be given kahit ano pang blood sugar value nila. So, kung sino yung kumuha ng blood sugar, siya rin yung responsible sa pag-check ng insulin. Okay? O, oh, ba In just a span of 1 hour from 11 to 12 p.m., naging productive ka kahit papaano. Ang dami mo nang nagawa at sobrang matutuwa na yung preceptor mo. From 12 o'clock to 1 p.m., one nurse will be starting the medication administration 
and the other nurse will be starting with the errands. The errands nurse may get a chance to collect the patient from theater, which is slightly different from the Philippine setting. Kasi di ba sa Pilipinas, usually yung mga recovery um, nurse yung nagdadala ng pasyente sa ward. Pero dito, pwede natin collectahin. So, dyan papasok ang tip number eight. Before you take or collect the patient from theater, it's very important, guys, to ask permission from your preceptor. First, if you're already allowed to do so, or second, if the staff nurse needs to accompany you. Guys, hindi pwedeng sobrang bibo natin. Kailangan safe din yung practice natin kahit papaano. Remember, nagte-training pa rin tayo, meaning nag-a-adapt pa rin tayo sa environment or clinical skills na napapractice dito sa Ireland. And at this time, kung wala ka namang kokolektahin na patient from theater, might as well assist the patients and set up their table for their dinner or lunch time. May mga patients din naman na bedbound, so talaga namang minsan nakadaya per lang yan or here in Ireland, it's called nappy or incontinence pad. So check the pad if it needs to be changed, kung soak na ba yung bed linen. Guys, dito nyo talaga may experience yung full nursing care. And sa totoo lang, actually, nakakapagod siya most of the time. But at the end of the day, kung sa tingin mo na ibigay mo naman yung best mo kahit papaano, rewarding na rin sa feeling. At bonus na lang yung marireceive mo kung magbibigay sila ng chocolates or any kind of gifts. Like Merong mga patients na non-verbal and kailangan naman talaga ng assistance when it comes to feeding. So guys, kung sa tingin nyo, hindi nyo to ginagawa sa Pilipinas, be open-minded and importante guys to be flexible as well. Meron din naman mga patients na magtatawag for bedside kumod, kailangan ng bedpan, kailangan ng assistance when it comes to going to the toilet with their assistive device like cane or zimmer frame. And make sure na yung mga pasyente na medyo sick or critical, importante na naka-upright sila yung position nila kasi may risk of aspiration kung finifeed nyo sila ng medyo hindi high fowler's position. So, importante na rin to be a patient advocate kahit Aww. gaano pa kahirap yung trabaho. Tip number nine. May mga times talaga na gusto mong magpa-impress sa preceptor mo or sa clinical nurse manager, but always remember this. No matter how good and competent you are, Always seek help if it's obvious that you can't do something on your own. Guys, may mga healthcare assistant or carer tayo dito na pwedeng tumulong sa atin. And no matter how good you are, you can only do things one at a time. Especially yung mga patients sa sobrang heavy talaga na talagang assistance of three. Don't do it on your own. Don't hurt your back. We only have one spinal cord in our lifetime. And kung may mga patients naman na kailangan ng bedside commode or bedpan and then may carer naman na hindi naman masyadong busy, delegate the task to them and it will really save you a lot of time. And also, it will save you from having unnecessary falls or unnecessary events na pwede namang ma-prevent if you only seek help. So guys, don't be afraid to ask. Guys, hindi tayo si Wonder Woman or si Captain Marvel. I know kasing ganda lang natin sila. <laughs> Pero hindi natin sila kasing lakas. So, don't afraid to ask. From 1 p.m. onwards, it's already the start of your lunch break. So the first nurse who went earlier today for the first break will also be starting the first break at lunchtime. So it's from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And then the other nurse will be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So at least you will have one hour each. Hindi na rin masama kasi nga sa Pilipinas, wala naman talaga tayong official lunch break, di ba? At dahil dyan, don't forget to hit like and subscribe! Tip number 10. 
So for adaptation nurses, it is actually common for you to have reflection once a week. It is the chance for you to voice out your concerns if you felt like you are having a hard time in your ward or felt like you are having a problem with communication or other factors. This is a great time for you to prioritize this one. Meaning, kung 2.15pm yung appointment nyo for your reflection, make sure that you will be on first break. So your break will be from 1pm to 2pm. Therefore, nakakain ka muna bago kayo pumunta sa inyong reflection. Bongga! Talaga namang hindi kayo magugutam dito sa Ireland. And after your lunch break, Probably from 3 o'clock p.m. onwards, this is the perfect time for you to continue your nursing documentation and even read the medical notes. So the medical notes here in Ireland is actually a different type of documentation because in the Philippines, we are used to only have one nursing handbook or one nursing um, notes only, diba. Right? Sa Pilipinas kasi, ba right, yung doctor's order is already incorporated with our nursing notes. So kapag sa Pilipinas, charge nurse ka, parang kanina, hawak-hawak mo lang yung chart ng pasyente, pero lumilipad na dahil sa dami ng doktor na tumitingin naman talaga at nagsusulat ng doctor's order. Pero here in Ireland, there is a separate book for that. So, first is the nurse's note. It includes all the vital signs of the patient, all about nursing staff and procedure. But in the medical notes, nandun yung plan about the patient. It includes also the plan from the multidisciplinary team, like speech and language therapist, the physical therapist, occupational therapist, dietitian, physiotherapist, and also from the gastroenterologist, from the oncology consultant, and etc. So guys, kailangan magbasa kayo ng medical notes at least before tea time or 5 o'clock p.m. Para ma-update nyo rin sa nurses' notes nyo yung plan and yung incoming shift will be able to see it somehow. And syempre, kung tapos ka naman din sa pagbabasa ng medical notes or even with your nursing documentation, kung sa tingin mo updated naman yon, this is also the best opportunity for you to do one specific task. This is wound dressing or changing the post-operative site dressings. So me, as an orthopedic nurse here in Ireland, we usually change or remove some of the sutures, clips, change the back dressings, and redress um, dressings in the pressure ulcer areas. But it's very important to ask your preceptor or ask your colleague if the patient is already due for changing the dressing. Some dressings may need to change like every day, every two days, every three days. And then for the clips to be removed, it will usually take after two weeks from the event of surgery. So usually, hindi agad-agad yung tinatanggal kasi nga kailangan pa mag ng wound. And kung sa tingin nyo, yung pressure ulcer area ng pasyente ay lumalala, meron tayong tinatawag dito na you may refer it to the tissue viability nurse. O, di ba, bongga? It is a kind of specialization here in Ireland. Hindi tayo basta-basta nag invento dito ng dressing. Meron talagang isang nurse na mag assess nung specific area na yun and sila yung magsasuggest kung ano yung dapat ibigay na dressing. So, Always check kung ano ba talaga yung kailangan nyo na dressing. And also, if meron kayong pasyente na merong colostomy and sa tingin nyo yung dressing or parang nagilik yung site, meron din tayong tinatawag na stoma nurse dito. So you may just call them or contact them if necessary na talagang palitan. Kasi guys, ito yung mga nurses sa talagang specialized sa ginagawa nila. So kahit alam naman natin yun and competent tayo even from the Philippines, and in that way, communicating with them is also one way of learning. Pagdating naman ng 5 o'clock p.m., usually this is called tea time. And here in Ireland, again, one will be doing the medication administration and the other nurse will be doing the errands. So same with what I have mentioned earlier, may isang nurse na mag-a-assist sa mga patients kung kailangan ng 
feeding or kailangan ng assistance when going to the toilet, offering commode or bedpan, and nandyan din naman yung care to help you. Again, seek help if hindi nyo talaga kaya. May mga times din na may mga patient pa na discharge at this time. So dito sa Ireland, the nurses are the one responsible or even the carer will also help you in stripping the linens in the bed. So yung bed sheets, tinatanggal natin yan and after nyan, we will call the cleaner as well. So dito ang tawag is cleaner but in the Philippines, it's usually called housekeeping, di ba? So sa Pilipinas where I used to work, the housekeeping um, will be the one facilitating cleaning the bed and also putting another linen in the bed. But here in Ireland, after linisin yon ng cleaner, tayo ulit mga nurse or carer yung maglalagay ng bagong bed linens dun sa bed. So, dito sa Ireland, medyo ibang-iba talaga yung routine from the Philippines. Pero wala naman ding masama dun kasi dun naman tayo natututo. And ang mahalaga dun is team nursing. So, kung may mga bagay ka na hindi kayang gawin on your own, especially if kailangan mo na mag-break, you can actually delegate it to the other nurse who just came from her break. Hindi na rin masama kasi as long as tulungan tayo, hindi ka naman talaga ganun mahihirapan. And kapag 6 p.m. na, break na naman! Break na naman! So guys, this is the last break for the day. This is third break. Again, the team will be divided into two. So yung unang nurse magbe-break siya from 6 o'clock to 6.30. And yung second nurse will be from 6.30 to 7 p.m. So guys, okay naman talaga yung trabaho dito. Hindi naman may hirapan. Talagang minsan nilulook forward ko na lang yung break. Kasi minsan kapag pagod na pagod ka na at hindi na talaga kaya, talagang nakakatulong guys yung break para magkaroon man lang tayo ng time to breathe, magkaroon man lang tayo ng time to relax, and importante yon. And after the third break, guys, I'm so excited because this is only just one hour away from you going home. Good job! So usually, yung ginagawa namin, mga 7pm onwards, minsan nagbibigay pa kami ng gamot dun sa mga pasyente na kailangan ng TPN, NGT feeding, tapos minsan binabalik na namin yung mga pasyente na nakaupo, back to bed na, and then chinecheck din namin yung pad nila kung kailangan ba talaga ma-change. Actually, easy yung trabaho dito kasi minsan kapag after ng third break, wala na usually ginagawa. Magno-notes ka na lang, i end mo na lang yung notes mo, and then mag ready na kayo for the handover. So since team nursing, usually one nurse will be staying in the ward and one nurse will go for the handover. Minsan, napapauwi na rin ako ng maaga kung kunyari tatlo kayo sa side nyo tapos yung isa mag stay sa ward. And usually dito guys, sobrang approachable and lenient din ang mga Irish katrabaho kasi madalas kung sino pa yung babalik kinabukasan, sila pa yung papauwiin agad even like 7 p.m. para lang makabawi kasi nga babalik pa sila bukas. So, hindi na rin masama at sobrang helpful yun, guys. At yun lamang po, dito na nagtatapos ang aking 11 tips para sa inyo on how to pass your adaptation within 6 weeks of preparation. Guys, sana nakatulong ito sa inyo kahit papaano and sana naging aware kayo at mas naging open talaga yung eyes nyo kung ano ba talaga yung nursing routine dito sa Ireland. Siyempre, mas madali kung mag adaptation ka kasi nga meron kang 6 weeks to prepare yourself to adapt with Ireland nursing routine and also learn about their culture. Hindi na rin masama kasi those 6 weeks of preparation, orientation, and adaptation Meron ka na ng sweldo and pwede ka na mag-prepare ng balikbayan box, pwede ka na magpadala sa pamilya mo. Hindi na rin talaga masama. Unlike sa Pilipinas, ba may mga times na tayo pa talaga yung nagbabayad ng training natin sa hospital. Minsan, casual lang or even hindi pa talaga tayo probationary. So, all the best para sa mga nurses na pupunta dito sa Ireland. Sobrang proud ako sa inyo kasi... Lalo na dun sa mga nakapasa na ng OET and lalo na rin dun sa mga plano na gusto na rin mag-abroad. Aba, hindi po madali yung buhay dito pero dahil 
malaki yung tiwala nyo sa Panginoon at malaki yung tiwala nyo sa sarili nyo, wala na rin masama dyan. And bonggang bongga yan, always chase your dreams, keep going, trust the Lord with all your heart because God is good all the time. Yun lamang po! Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po sa panonood ng vlog na ito. Na-appreciate ko po lahat ng good feedbacks na nabibigay nyo. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you all on my next vlog! God bless and take care!